Hey, this is Daryl as a service. I should probably try and get out of the sun. I'm late to a team's meeting. And it's a good thing that someone has added the team's details to that meeting because I can join while I'm on the run. So I'm just going to try and do that. Um, let's see if we can angle this so you can see it. Good now, right now, wherever and whenever you are, this is Daryl as a service commenting on an activity I had this week. I, I was trying to join a meeting, as, as that fella said in the video, um, that uh, I didn't manage to get there in person in time. So I had the opportunity to be able to join from a meeting invite that included Teams details. Now this is gonna be all about showing you how and encouraging you to add Teams details to every meeting invite so that we're giving people options to be able to attend. Um, so I'm gonna go through and pass comment on this. I do want to apologize, I did make a couple of problems uh, or issues as I started this off because I joined the wrong meeting. Um, but as we start out here, I'll explain a few things and we'll get back into it. Now, this is starting off with the, uh, the meeting invite that um, is a reminder there saying there's the meeting, um, really easy to get into it and uh, open that up. Let's see how we go. We have got the Teams meeting, or the meeting invite. There's the meeting. Okay, I'm signed in. We've got our Teams. So I am signed in on the Teams app on my phone, so this is good. It means that when I click this join button, then I can join the meeting. Now, unfortunately, this first meeting that I tapped into uh, was the wrong meeting. Uh, it was in progress, and I had two meetings that were uh, in progress, so I tapped the wrong one. But we'll get back into the right meeting soon. Join link, so I'll hit that. Okay, we are joining someone to let you in the meeting. <laughs> There's my first clue uh, because it was uh, a meeting that I had organized for work uh, and this is a meeting which is in the Regarding 365 uh, group. Uh, I did offer my apologies that I wasn't going to be able to make it till half an hour later but I did join early so uh, you'll see a couple of familiar faces. Uh, funny hey, like so I've joined this meeting. Oh. Phil Worrell, top corner, er, uh, Ian uh, Morin, um, and Alistair Pugin. Hello guys, got a run? Wrong meeting. <laughs> <laughs> All right, funny that. We've got uh, this one. Uh, this one. So tapping into my calendar there, you can see I've got two calendars. Everything in orange is my, my personal calendar and that's where the Regarding 365 meeting is and everything in green is my work calendar. So I'm gonna tap into the meeting that I organized for work. There we go. So we've got Teams details right there. We've got three people that are invited plus me, the organizer. They all have the option to join the meeting remotely if they need to. And this one, here we go. Video on. Join it now. Now, uh, oops, I'll just back up a little bit here. You'll notice that uh, as I'm joining that meeting, um, it's given me the ability to check out and see, you know, have I got the video pointing so that it's going to um, have the best view, um, not a whole lot of light behind me. Um, but more importantly, uh, we've got our microphone is muted and turned off. And this is a slightly different behavior with the uh, mobile experience for Teams. Uh, if you're on the desktop uh, and you are one of the first few to join the meeting, then it can uh, join by default with the microphone on. Um, but what I saw here was uh, from the mobile that joins with the microphone muted uh, because in a mobile environment, perhaps you've got all the various things happening in the background that you want to sort of have a bit more control over. Uh, and I am uh, tuned in using uh, my Jabra Evolve Elite 65Ts, um, which I'm wearing one now to keep the, the audio in check as I'm, I'm listening to, to things uh, as we're recording. Great, great devices, especially for working for mobiles. Cornell. Hey Cornell. Hey, uh, I'm going to be uh, just a couple of minutes away. I'm just walking up to uh, the. All right. <laughs> All right. Just checking the device. Yep. Uh, so Cornell's just uh, getting herself sorted there. Yep, no problem. I can hear you fine. 
um, and we'll uh, see you shortly. All right, so we'll get up to the meeting. I'll just mute myself so we're not. So if you are joining a meeting remotely, uh, then it is good practice. Uh, any. You know, even if you are in a in a room, but particularly when on a mobile, to mute that microphone, and you can listen in. You can be part of the meeting by um, hearing the content that's been talked about, and then maybe when you're ready to pass comment or you've got something to say, then that's when you unmute. Really important for uh, working. Um, joining a meeting from a mobile because this is where even more noise is occurring, uh, and you don't have control over that. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. That probably is the reason why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Well, I'll scan myself through to the door. I so often forget to check this. I scan and then I walk away. I'm like, oh, what elevator was I supposed to go to again? I love these elevators. They're really useful for saving time and coordinating who's going up and when, but um, I've got to get in the habit still of, of checking that letter. Probably should take notice of uh, which elevator that was. So the point here, people, is that we're able to uh, join this meeting while we're on the go. Um, so if you get in the habit of adding meeting details to your meetings, then you can join from wherever. Exactly. And and this is the point I want to drive home. We want to be able to give people options. And even if they are running late or they have to stay longer wherever they are and they can't attend in person, if we've added these options, then people can join. And not miss that meeting. That's my floor. Awesome. Cool. And Cornell, I might cut out for a little bit while I'm in the uh, elevator. I know that for sure. Oh, Full elevator this morning. <laughs> So if you are joining on a Teams meeting while you're in an elevator, don't discuss your details. Well, everyone is there. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 This is a remote Teams meeting. <laughs> Very friendly bunch here at Datacom. Um, so nice of them to wonder who's the weirdo in the corner with the GoPro pointing at his phone, um, but very understanding. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. You've got background blur, though. Sorry? The background blur? Oh, I know. I know. Not on the phone, though, sadly. I, sometimes I wish it had foreground blur. <laughs> that would be quite a cool feature to have background blur on your phone. Um, you notice there too, there's a, a message that the, the network is poor. And, you know, expect this in elevators because they move around and wireless signals are, um, you know, not, not that great in terms of getting through to elevators. How does the Teams Mobile uh, deal with that? It gives you that message to say it's poor. Uh, you might want to turn off your incoming video or turn off your video so that you can improve the bandwidth through. And eventually you'll see that it does drop out, but it, it um, sits there retrying to help me get back into that meeting. So I want to, as a way of saying I'm, I'm attending remotely, I'm an active participant, but I want to let Cornell know that uh, this is where I am and that you know, I might cut out for a bit. Just about there, maybe. No, we're going to almost every floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just about there, one more floor to go. This is Bear Grylls signing off. Don't forget your pocket knives, people. All right, here we go. Joining that meeting. All right. Hello, Hello Cornell. Cornell. You made it. I did. So that's how you join the meeting. But um, being part of that meeting and including the elevator might be a bit of fun. We'll see you again soon. Yeah, well, uh, that, that's uh, the practicality, the... Um, the example of, of uh, why uh, adding Teams details to a media invite is useful because I was able to join that meeting, uh, I could participate, I could listen in on the content that was being discussed and uh, others could join too. I know that a couple of members there weren't able to make it in person that morning too. Um, later on, Owen became part of that meeting but he was able to view that recording too. So there's all these benefits of being able to add the Teams meeting details and make sure that people have options. So we're gonna have a quick look at some of these options and, and hopefully you've understood the reason why and you've seen a real story about how that played out. 
Um, but let's uh, take a look at, we'll just uh, minimize this thing and we'll get into the most common place that we will be creating meeting invites, um, which is the Outlook calendar. Uh, now if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem and you may have been using Skype for business for a while, um, then you would also have done something similar to this. Uh, we'll choose a, a meeting time slot. We'll just grab this one over here. And some of us are in the habit of just creating a meeting from scratch like this, and we add in a um, review, and then we might add in a couple of people. All right, we we'll add there and there, and then we'll give it a location. Uh, we'll drop in the crystal meeting room there, and um, away we go, agenda, etc., etc. And we send that off, um, and then someone wants to be able to turn up but can't. Uh, and we're trying to figure out how to dial in people using the conference uh, facilities because it's a, a mixed environment and we're not familiar with, so it's all about panic. What if we had added those team's details um, before sending out meet and invite? So we can do that. We've already started that meet and invite. We might just hit the team's meeting button and boom, we've got the details. We've already created an online meeting. We're giving people options. Uh, not only that, but this one has conferencing facilities. So even if they didn't have the Teams app on their mobile, they could dial in, they could use those details and they could participate at least at the audio level. So that's really good. Um, but uh, what about if we did it another way? Let's uh, same, same time slot because what happens is we get into that habit of creating that meeting invite, we add in all the details, the people, the room, the whatever else, and then we may forget to add the team's details. So let's do it in one click. We've selected the time slot, we'll click new team's meeting. We've added the team's meeting details immediately, and we'll get into creating that meeting invite. But have a look here too, it's also got the location as the Microsoft Teams meeting. So if you are adding a uh, room, as we will now, We'll find the hood room, there we go. Um, then we have given people options to attend in person and you're also signaling that this is a Teams meeting as well. So you've got both options there, that's pretty cool. Another way to, um, to create that meeting invite, sometimes we're doing it in response to an email. So here's Isaiah Langer. Um, and let's just say this was a, a regular email. I'm gonna respond with a, a meeting and just get into the habit of while you're in here, hit that Teams meeting button, and then continue with uh, the various details. So you're being inclusive. Now that's the Outlook experience on the desktop. Slightly different experience with uh, Outlook on the web. We've got our calendar and Outlook on the web, and we'll go for a time slot up here. Select that. We have that quick detail, we've been able to drop in a meeting or an appointment really quickly, um, and I, we do need to click through to more options to be able to see things here. So let's do the uh, check-in, um, invite attendees, let's go Miriam and Christy. Um, and the experience here is you don't have a button to immediately make it a Teams meeting, use the slider. Um, it'd be nice if it had a little Teams icon there, but. Uh, at least you know it's there. It's probably going to change over time anyway, so don't worry. But do look out for that thing that says make it a Teams meeting. Now that doesn't mean that you can't add a physical room here. We can also browse for rooms. And let's have a look here. We'll do building one and conference room. Right, so we've got our conference room, a physical place, plus we've got our Teams meeting. Um, you don't see the team's details added to the meeting invite at this point here, so don't fret. Know that you've got that switch there. Uh, let's send that off, and good to see that Miriam and Christy are available at that time. Um, go back into our meeting invite, double click, double click, there we go, and there's our team's meeting details, right? So, you know, it's, it's there, don't worry. Um, now, if I had uh, planned ahead, I probably could have clicked in and showed you how to do this from the mobile as well. We'll save that for another episode. But one other place that we can create meet and invites is from Microsoft Teams itself. We're in Teams. We'll go into our calendar. Uh, I'll click across there to our next week because that's what we're organizing. And we'll choose a time slot. All right, so we have selected our time slot. Where's the make it a Teams meeting button? Well, you're in Teams already, aren't you? So it's going to be a Teams meeting. So this is good, uh, very easy to do. Uh, check in again, 
Um, we'll give a physical room as well because we do want to give people the option of in person or external or rather remotely. Um, we'll invite people. Um, so we've got uh, Isaiah, whoops, Isaiah and uh, Megan. All right, so we've invited our attendees. Um, now, we've seen in another episode, it's good practice to add your agenda, etc. This is a demo, so I'm not going to make you wait for that. Uh, but there is one other thing that we can do here within Teams that uh, makes it quite unique. When you're setting up a meeting within your Outlook calendar, um, then uh, and you're adding the Teams details, it's going to be a standalone meeting. I know that's not an official term, but I, I like to think of it as it's a meeting that sits there out on its own, and people can attend, and they can... You know, share various things within that meeting, but it's it's a meeting. It's out there. It's not connected to any team. What we do to connect it to a team is add it into a channel. And the effect of that, if we just drop this into, let's say, design for example, um, is that the meeting invite is going to be sent out to the whole team. It's available to the team to attend. They can deny or rather um, say decline. I'm not going to come along to that. Um, but it's available and it's there for people to attend. And the benefit as we go into um, looking at that, all right, so notice here too, as I made it a channel meeting, um, I do need to add the people back in. They may not be team members, so that's why it does, uh, let's see if Isaiah is yeah, he's a team member of the design team, and we'll schedule that meeting. So where does that end up? Uh, you should see, yep, you're taken right through to the channel where that meeting is going to be. It's available for everyone to attend. They've got the meeting sent to, or the invite sent to their, their inbox and they can decline if they want to or attend. Um, and the content that we're going to create before, during and after, questions, attachments, uh, chat during the meeting, after the meeting we've got action points and various things, they're all going to be in that same thread. So yeah, definitely a, a good thing there. Right, so three different ways to hold a, uh, a meeting and add those Teams meeting details. Remember, key thing here is to be inclusive, to make sure that if people can't attend this meeting in person, they do have options. Uh, and you've got options too. You can record that meeting later and you've got a way of capturing that chat and whatever has been um, contained and that is, is available there too. Nice way to make it easy for people to catch those notes and various things rather than it just being a conversation thread. Now if you like to continue uh, exploring these modern workplace scenarios with me, you like to hear stories about how these things have been used rather than just looking at brand new features and things and the ways to do stuff, but you want to see it in context and that's my driver, I want to help you understand why uh, so that you can adopt it and so you can help people in your organization to understand why they would use it too um, then do follow me on uh, on twitter daryl as a service and uh, you're probably watching this on uh, on youtube on modern workplace scenarios my channel uh, i'll also be pushing this out live to a various other few places to hopefully attract people to the channel but um that was uh that was the that's the show um and tune in next time to see another modern workplace scenario bye for now